Welcome back viewers, it's James Com, your half-assed reporter, the guy on the bike, saying hello to our worldwide audience. And we're in Chelsea, and today we're gonna make our, or we're gonna try to make our debut visit to the new Pace Gallery Tower. through of an exhibition by Joe Lynch novel titled The Patch of Blue The Prisoner Calls the Sky Oh boy Well we're foregoing the fear of coronavirus There's Vito This is interesting. So they've got a uh, photo shoot going on here. Well, that was the basic layout of the exhibition. We'll start out looking at this piece. titled The Patch of Blue, The Prisoner Calls the Sky. One, 2019. And they're calling these oil on found fabric. It's 108 by 90 inches. Well, I guess I would consider myself a fan of Julian, of Julian's. I, uh, I think I can uh, say pretty definitively that Julian's show, maybe his first show at Mary Boone was probably the first uh, contemporary art ex exhibit that I saw when I came to New York in 1979. And uh, well, that was a show at Mary Boone. I think it was also my first visit to Soho. And uh, well, I was impressed. This was even before he started doing his broken plate paintings. This is Untitled 3, 2019. This is ink and oil on found fabric. 84 by 65 and a half. Now, uh, yeah, they're calling this found fabric. Oh, I was thinking these uh, bottom sections were actually painted, but it's also, uh, it's like a colored fabric. So they're sewed together. And, uh, well, as the 70s turned into the 80s, and Neo-expressionism kind of burst on the scene by way of the uh, Italian Three C's and the German Neue Wilden. 
Julian became quite a uh, phenomenon. This is another the patch of blue, number three. This is 108 by 90. And, uh, well, Julian was a rising superstar. Uh, there are a lot of articles about he and Mary Boone and uh, maybe a couple of other young artists, David Solly, that uh, kind of started to redefine what it meant to be a young, dynamic, risk-taking painter. And uh, I made it a point to try to go to as many of his shows as I could. This is untitled. <laughs> this, is, this is only 84 by 60 something. And uh, I think it was his third show at uh, Mary Booney's Act. was also taken on at that point by Leo Castelli. And uh, that really opened a lot of people's eyes because Castelli hadn't taken on a new, a new artist in 20 or 25 years, maybe since Don Judd. This is untitled for 2019. And well, Julian was uh, one of the superstars of the 80s. He was certainly the, uh, the guy that a lot of people downtown were looking at. And uh, well, in certain ways, it was good for him, but in other ways, of course, anytime you achieve that kind of recognition, you've got a lot of people uh, dogging you, ready to try to take you down. Okay, so this piece is kind of interesting. He's obviously uh, kind of stained in some areas behind his figure. Just calling it oil and ink on found fabric. This is untitled one. 2019, ink and oil on found fabric, 84 by 65 and a quarter. So I got to see Julian evolve from his kind of uh, scraped paintings. They almost had like a leathery surface and some of them had uh, little nooks cut in there. From that to his broken plate paintings. And then from that to his 
black velvet paintings. I think he's kind of made a science of uh, discovering the most uh, declasse, the most kitschy, most uh, kind of questionable materials and uh, tropes and then he's kind of brought them into a more uh, mainstream avant-garde level. Okay, so this is a group of major paintings. People are telling me I need to use equipment like this. I don't think so. Well, this is kind of uh, interesting because Julian has got a lot of uh, eccentrically shaped canvases. They're just kind of start out as rectangles and then somehow they get uh, tweaked, stretched. It's titled Agumilius II. This is 2018, oil and gesso on found fabric. So I was talking about how Julian has become a star and also how there are a lot of detractors. And uh, I think one of the things that nobody can deny is that uh, Julian is ambitious. This piece is 131 by 175. So that's big. Uh, well, we visited the Susan Rothenberg show down at Speroni about a month ago and uh, she had some large paintings, not this large, but her big pieces had footprints, dog prints, dog hair, all kinds of things in them. And, uh, well, there's a little sense of that kind of uh, archaic roughness with these. This is Lagunilius 1, 2018. This is 140 by 175. And uh, so I was talking about how these were kind of stretched. You know, when they're uh, calling these found fabric, I don't really know what that means. Uh, also, the way these are stitched, stitched together makes me think of Chris Martin and some of his uh, tar paintings. So, gosh, I would assume that this was gray fabric. He then goes and paints on. Okay, here is an interesting uh, kind of a trademark or device is this kind of uh, big slab of paint coming in and then kind of tapering off in a little vein on one side. Well, 
we're not going to get a chance to look at the really big piece. Okay, we'll try to sneak in and get a few glimpses here. It's got these little uh, nodes. titled Preschool and After School and it's big. This is 128 by 213 inches and uh, oh boy you leave these lights on for a while they get pretty hot in here. Well I was gonna say that uh, one of the things, one of the qualities of a lot of Julian's work is the scale. And, uh, well, there are a lot of stories, art world scuttlebutt about some of those, but, uh, well, if you can do it, you do it. Well, I was pointing out his uh, kind of his trademark slab, and there are other things I like about his work. And uh, this is one of the things that uh, Chris Martin always talks about too: is uh, how you treat the edges of the composition. Okay, we got something kind of splashed in there. Well, I was on my way to the, uh, or I was thinking about going to the Armory show, but uh, due to the coronavirus, the, what do they call it, Cordance 19, I decided to skip it, and uh, I think Julian's show opened that Thursday, so I missed that as well. Looks like some of these are kind of uh, stitched up. Like a Burry, Italian artist. This is more a Laguinus four. 144 by 159. As you can see, in many ways, these uh, large pieces on the monochrome background are almost like drawings. Well, this may be apocryphal. And, uh, I've always wanted to ask Julian about the story I heard that when he was a young artist living in Texas that uh, he heard that Forrest Best was in a nursing home, I think maybe in Brownsville, somewhere down on the coast. And uh, Julian jumped in his car, took off and went down and visited Forrest Best. And uh, well, if you're not familiar with this painter, you should uh, spend some time Google him. It's quite a uh, intriguing yet tragic and eccentric story. As I said, this is my first visit to the uh, the New Pace Tower. I think they've probably been open about six months or something. And uh, well, I'm one of those people that. Uh, is frightened of uh, institutions in large, shiny buildings. So I was kind of gun shy, but now we're here. It's very impressive. So this is also another language, Millis 
2018, 135 by 171. Uh, I was just going to say, I was at uh, Aunt Julian's sh show a couple of years ago. His uh, series of broken plate rose paintings that were based on, uh, I think, some flowers that were found around Vincent van Gogh's or van Gogh's grave. And uh, I think Julian was using the exhibition and the proceeds to f help fund the completion of the movie starring William Defoe. Okay, so I'll see what like fingers reaching up some kind of spiky things with your little slab of paint. James Com reporting on Julian Schnabel, The Path of Blue, The Prisoner Calls the Sky. Here in the New Pace Tower, 540 West 25th Street. You can like this, share, subscribe, Recommend it to your friends, post it at all your social media sites, and you can leave your thoughts, ideas, comments, criticisms, and reviews below. We just ask you to say, please, after 15 years, thank you, Kate. Thank you. Boy George? <laughs> Am I right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay, you knew all the time. All right, well. <laughs>